Time for an odd man rush here on the SDH Network as soccer is in session. And for this, we go to Georgia Southern. Check in on the men's and women's programs down in the borough here with head coach Lee Squires, head coach Chris Adams. That Guys, thanks for dropping by for a 2v1. Thanks for having us. All right. So uh, since we believe in chivalry here on the SDH Network, we'll go uh, women's program first. So, Chris, let me ask you this. Biggest lesson that you – brought forward from the 23 season that you think will help you out in the 24 season is what you think? Yeah, that's a tough question. Uh, Got a new bunch, really. Uh, Lost nine players, five starters. Um, So really young right now. So we're kind of having to uh, start over a little bit, but uh, just making sure that the team chemistry and and culture is good, uh, you know, from the start. So focusing more on on chemistry and the the off-the-field stuff Um, you know, got a little bit of work to do after opening weekend with the on field stuff. Um, so just trying to focus on, on a team standard and team chemistry right now would be my answer. Lee, what about on your end? I think for for us, um, it's year two, um, of of this sort of project we have and, uh, just taking a lot of the lessons from year one, you know, we, as a coaching staff and as a group of players, a lot of us were new to, to, to not only, the Sunbelt Conference and, and the competitive nature of it, but um, but Division One as a whole. You know, my first experience as a Division One head coach, and you know, I think we've got a lot more knowledge going into year two, a little bit more consistency with returning guys, um, and a second layer of recruitment. So the team is starting to to form its identity now, and, and hopefully we see more of that progress in the next few months. Yeah. You know, so Chris, on the the women's side. You got to go to Honolulu. Uh, that's never a bad thing. And uh, catching up with Hawaii and Pepperdine. And I know that things are new and everything, but what was it like to be able to take a program out to a, a an, an exciting environment, you know, something that probably hasn't been done in quite some time? What was it like to have that kind of an experience to start a season off? Yeah, I mean, it was a great start, you know, uh, playing in paradise, um, against two very good teams. I mean, first you're playing against the home side in Hawaii um, with a, you know, not going to say a hostile environment, but a good home crowd. Um, so, so that was, you know, a, a neat experience. Um, and then playing a very good Pepperdine team. Um, luckily, we went early enough to be able to witness, you know, some of the touristy stuff. So we were able to take in a luau, um, you know, able to eat at Duke's and, and, and do some of the uh, iconic spots. You know, we had Rainbow Drive in. Um, the first day. So, yeah, I think for a lot of our players, um, it's a once in a lifetime type trip and not only for our players, but our staff. Um, and I, I think just being together on the road for a week will go a long way um, and, and just sort of getting to know know each other and, and know what makes people tick. Um, so, yeah, it was it was very exciting. You know, everything uh, everything went well, except the results on the field. And then, Lee, you've had the chance to have a couple of exhibitions. You had one against the Georgia Southwestern there uh, at Tormenta Stadium. You walk across the parkway and you get to have one there at Tormenta Stadium. And then you go down to Tampa to take on USF. What's the early returns from those two exhibition matches for you? Um, a lot of positives. You know, that the first one was, was barely a week into preseason. So we managed to play two different 11s in, in each half of the game. Um, our attacking players each contributed to the three goals that we scored, kept a clean sheet, which is always good confidence. Um, and, and I think 24 guys saw, saw the field. So um, that was certainly uh, an upgrade on a, on a training session against ourselves and, and going against um, kind of the unpredictability of, of a team we, we, we couldn't scout beforehand. Um, and, and then the USF trip was uh, not, not as fancy as Hawaii, but you know a good location to, to go down to Tampa to play against a top program. Um, big field, humid conditions um, against a team that can, that can move the ball well and have, uh, you know, two strikers that, that can really hurt you. So, um, you know, I thought in that game uh, we outshot them. Uh, maybe it was outpossessed a little bit, but certainly created um, the bulk of the good chances, uh, gifted them a goal, which, you know, a young player will, will learn from, but had the had the resilience to respond within within six or seven minutes. Um and, and really give a good account of ourselves to, to kind of increase the belief that we can go, you know, toe to toe with, with with the top program, you know, throughout the southeast. So, yeah, a lot of um, a, a lot of different things learned in both games, but but equally beneficial. Um, and looking forward to, to to this opening week. 
And Chris, one of the things that you know you mentioned is it's a young side. There's a lot of freshmen and sophomores on that roster. When it comes to the the integration with them and the the players that are returning and, and making sure that everyone's on the same page, how much of a challenge is that with all of these young faces and the, those that are there with you? How much of a challenge is it to make sure that everybody is on the same page when you get to full song and when you get to conference, say conference play? Yeah, I mean, I think these these non conference games is critical. You know your best lineup. You have. Uh, your substitution patterns down, you know, with only one exhibition um, this year, you know, I think we're still um, still trying to figure some things out. And so it's really a good issue where over time um, we're a lot deeper than we've been in the past, which creates, you know, competition at every position. I think it's just figuring out those pairings of who works best with each other, um, which takes a little bit of time, you know, and, and so, you know, we want to give ourselves a little bit of grace to figure out what those matchups need to be. But I also think for the long haul, having a lot of people that can step on and do a job should serve as well um, by the time we get towards the latter part of the season and into the conference tournament of having so many people with experience and, and obviously having, um, you know, having all of those decisions sort of sorted out. But uh, the quality depth should should play uh, pay dividends later on in the season. It's just figuring out right now with so many new players, um, those pairings is the biggest challenge. And, you know, Lee, we talk about youth and, and you look at a roster for Georgia Southern coming into the season. There's a lot of FRs and there's a lot of SOs that are there uh, that are a part of your your makeup. And there's also a heavy international contingent that that's I, th- I would think adds another element to making sure everyone can blend and that everyone's on the same page with relationships both on and off the field. How much of a challenge is that? Uh, for sure. I think, um, you know, the international flavor, I think we're about 33 percent of the roster is, is from overseas. So naturally, there's some there's some challenges with them coming over to the southeast, getting used to, you know, our guys from Denmark have not seen heat and humidity like this, for example, even the British guys, you know, it's not raining as much. So um, there, there's some things to get used to there. But we, we do a lot of research. Um, on, on the front end before we recruit them to make sure that regardless of where they're from, uh, they're good characters. They're going to work hard. They're going to be good teammates. Um, they're going to hopefully develop into leaders to, to, to go along with their talent as well. And yeah, we, we've got a good international contingent, but we've also got a good core of, of Georgia and, and Southeast and Florida players in particular. So um, merging them together, uh, regardless of where they're from is um, if you've got good people, it makes it makes your, your, your job as a coach a little bit easier. Um, but and, and, it, and it is a really, so far, tight-knit group of guys. But, um, you know, we haven't picked an 11 yet for a competitive game. So uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, some challenges present themselves there once people start getting, you know, left out of, of squads. But uh, it is a good group that, you know, regardless of their, their individual feelings towards playing time or not, um, that they're supporting each other. Uh, so far, so good. Yeah, and... Chris Lee mentioned the the southeastern coefficient, for lack of a better way to, to phrase it. There's a lot of Georgia on, on the roster. There's some other southeastern states there. What's it been like for you to see the the sport grow to where you can stay at home and you notice talent that other schools, because they're outside the state of Georgia, may not necessarily know, but you you get to see that talent from the high school level straight up, and you're like, okay, that's the kind of individual that I want here in Statesboro. What's it been like to see – the talent pool grow here in the state of Georgia and in the Southeast over time. Yeah, I think the Southeast is just a, a hotbed, you know, for soccer, uh, no pun intended, but, uh, you know, just to be able to, to get so many, uh, you know, good student athletes out of the state of Georgia. I mean, obviously the hope scholarship um, plays a big part in, in helping, you know, scholarships go that much further, um, but also just having good students and then, you know, also the bordering states. I mean, we have some Florida kids, some Alabama kids, North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, so all those bordering states, you know, we have representatives out of all of those. Um, and then really we just have three internationals and so three English players um, to acclimate, you know, to, to the heat as Lee uh, alluded. Um, so that that's a challenge for sure, um, you know, but uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it is nice to to just be you know so close to Atlanta and 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 people be able to you know go away from college, but yet be close enough to where um, we get really good parental support, you know, and and really good fan following, uh, you know, because of that. So yeah, that it, it it's great. It's a great thing to to be right here in the state of Georgia and have so many good players in your backyard. Lee Squires and Chris Adams, the head coaches of the men's and women's programs at Georgia Southern, hanging out with us here as soccer's in session here on the SDH Network. So, Lee, how does this work? You have folks that, you know, that are that third of the roster. I I mean, how do you recruit these days? Is it as simple as going and looking at huddle and video and doing virtual interviews? How does this recruiting process work when you're dealing with an ocean that separates you? Yeah, it's obviously uh, more of a challenge to get to South America or over to Europe or or Africa or anywhere else in the world. But the world is getting a lot smaller these days. You know, you can watch um, you can watch a game online or, or you know uh, the, the the replay of it, and it's almost like you're there in the stadium itself. But um, the step up into Division One for me from from Division Two, the resources are more readily available. I was able to get over to uh, Italy, Sweden, and Denmark in December. Uh, on a 10 day trip and, uh, you know, really strengthen relationships with, you know, the, the recruiting agencies, if you like, that are, that are sending these uh, guys across, um, but also see firsthand, you know, those, those players in person um, and get to see some of the things you may miss on video. Um, but yeah, the, the world's definitely becoming a lot smaller. You, you can have, you know, just like we are now, a, a pretty in-depth conversation without having to be in the same room. And it's similar you know, when you're, when you're identifying players, you, you start off with the highlight video, which is the best of what they have. And then as much as possible, you, you dive into the full games um, to see, you know, how they respond to mistakes or um, are they given direction on the field? Even if you can't necessarily hear the communication, you can see it. So, yeah, the, the world's a lot smaller now, which which makes it easier. Um, but as much as you can, you still want to get across and, and see uh, firsthand, you know, who you're potentially bringing into your program. Chris, how different is recruiting from when you first started as a head coach to now? How, how much of a, a moonshot has it been from day one to where you are right now in Statesboro? Yeah, I think, as Lee said, the, the resource is definitely much more plentiful, um, you know, which helps. Um, you know, the, the character piece is so important um, that, that I agree with Lee, you got to get out there and, and meet these people firsthand and figure out what type of character, um, they have as well. But yeah, when I first started out, you know, the game, uh, really, you know, it's grown exponentially now and there's just so many more players, um, you know, to sift through and figure out which ones are just that right fit. So I think it's more, a lot more volume. And then two, you know, the more successful that we've been, uh, you know, in some ways it gets easier because more people want to play for you, but then your needs are so much more finite that finding that exact person that fits um, the needs of your team or group becomes a bigger challenge as well. So, you know, definitely as I've climbed the ladder, starting at NAI, then D2, now D1, um, you know, much more competitive as well. Just because you've identified them at this level doesn't mean you're going to be able to land them. And so, you know, definitely got a, uh, you know, w- when you find that person, uh, you definitely got to court them and, and throw everything at them and, and see if you can't, uh, you know, get that perfect fit for your program. But it's it's definitely changed uh, dramatically, you know, in my 28 years in college soccer. All right, so time for the, the the season preview stuff here. You guys have matches coming up with your respective teams in a couple days. Lee, we'll start with you. Coming up uh, in a couple of days there in Statesboro, it's a matchup against Wofford on Thursday afternoon. For somebody that wanders into Tormenta Stadium and sees Georgia Southern play for the first time with you in charge, I guess this is the ma- the match game portion of the program. When things are going well for me out on the pitch, we are doing blank offensively, defensively. How would you, how would you say when things are going well, style of play, things like that, when things are going well, blank is occurring for us? 3-0 uh, up after 10 minutes would be a good start. Um, but but no, we, we want to, you know, it's going to be 85, 90 degrees of kickoff, 5 p.m. Um, great facilities, gracious hosts, tough opposition. Uh, so for us, we want to start the game on the front foot, and that's trying to be aggressive and trying to implement our game plan as early as possible. And, and how much of the game can we control? 
you know, our possession is going to be important in, you know, not, not giving the ball away cheaply because it's so hot. Um, it, it's going to be, you know, maybe a minute before you see it again. So can we circulate the ball? Can we, you know, pin their outside backs back um, and, and, and really get into their half and, and try and execute our patterns of play? Um, and then have a resilience and an organization defensively, be nice and compact and be difficult to, to break down. Um, and then understand at this level that the games, uh, you know, are not often separated by more than a goal. So we have to pay special attention to set pieces uh, for and against as well, because if things are kind of nip and tuck, then, you know, a set piece can, can break the deadlock and open the game up. So um, in, in all phases of the game, offense, defense and, and the transitions, uh, plus the set pieces, um, we're going to have to be uh, really on point because there's no easy games at this level. And then after that match is completed, Chris, it's your turn going up against Kennesaw State. So when the Eagles are going up against Hootie Who, when folks wander into the door and they're looking at the second match of the doubleheader, how would you personify when things are going well, what's happening out there for you? Yeah, I think we're predicated on tempo. Um, I, we like to play fast, um, you know, get to goal um, as quickly as possible, not necessarily direct, but just in the fewest number of passes possible. Um, you know, we're, we're athletic, so we like to press um, and, you know, so maybe pressing, winning the ball a bit higher up the field uh, to create more scoring chances. Um, and then you got to be organized defensively. I mean, we've prided ourselves a, a lot. Um, with a new back four on, on communication. So I think communication and organization play a critical part as well. Uh, and then as a testament in our first game of Hawaii, you know, both goals came off set pieces. Um, you know, that's such an important part of the game, um, just making sure we pride ourselves on set pieces and make them count for us. Um, and hopefully don't give up too many, you know, rather give up throw-ins than, than corners and and not create fouls in our own, you know, defensive third to give them opportunities um, on set pieces. So just kind of discipline, organize and discipline defensively, um, you know, uh, not so cautious on the attack, you know, taking risk, running at players, trying to get to goal as, as frequently as possible, um, and then, then pressing and winning it high up the field uh, would be a good day for us. Okay, so then Lee, when folks wander in and they're watching, if this if they were if they had if they had their streaming device in front of them and they were watching on television as I hold up my phone, the the uh, the TV starts. You get the open live from Tormenta Stadium. You know it's at Georgia Southern Soccer, and then you and I are in the booth. We're we're calling the game. If I toss to you and say, okay, who are the players in the Lee Squires spot shadow that folks need to be paying attention to in this matchup? Who will folks instantly gravitate toward when it comes to your group there uh, in that matchup coming up on Thursday? I mean, naturally, I, th I think everybody's attention drifts towards the attacking players who are, you know, athletic and exciting and can beat people and uh, get shots off and, you know, really uh, be entertaining to watch. So we've, we've got two young freshmen out wide who have been with us since the spring who um, uh, are so far maybe ahead of where they maybe should be at this point. Um, we have a recognised number nine in Ryan Holmes as a pure goal scorer. We have runners from midfield. Um, but also we've got a, a, a bit of experience now. The centre-back partnership is the same um potentially as, as, as last year, which, you know, they played 17 games together. So we, we have a sixth year senior and, and captain in, in Alistair Dungeon. We have a junior captain and goalkeeper in Nate Martinez. So there's a little bit more continuity and, and maybe um, a bit more uh, recognizable guys because they, they're here for a second or a third year now. So I think all over the pitch, it's, it's a good balance um, and certainly less sort of square pegs in round holes than, than a year ago. So um yeah, I think we're going to be exciting to watch. I think we're going to be uh, a team that Eagle Nation can can be proud of. Um, and hopefully we get off to a good start. All right. So, Chris, what about for you on your end with Kennesaw State coming to town? We're, we're, in, the, we're in the booth. We're calling the game. I toss to you. Who are the folks to, that folks will gravitate toward for them as they're watching the game down there at Tormenta Stadium? Yeah, I mean, Smith Cathy, I think, is, is somebody you notice right away. Um, I think for a lot of different reasons. One is just her versatility, um, can play many different places. Um, I think Carly Borgelt and Ansley Crenshaw, you know, are critical uh, components there in the in the midfield. 
Um, and then right now the back four um, is, is probably, um, you know, not quite solidified, but, you know, Kendall Wilson has done a really good job back there for us um, organizing. And then, you know, we've having played two games, we've played each keeper once. Um, so, so maybe figuring that match up as well. Um, but I think the midfield is probably the strength uh, of our group this year. Um, and then, you know, Smith, Kathy's ability to score goals and, and Bree Conley, um, should also find the back of the net, you know, fairly frequently as well. So um, th those are probably the players to watch at, at this point. Gentlemen, it's great to catch up with you as soccer's in session there in Statesboro with Georgia Southern men's head coach Lee Squires, women's head, head coach Chris Adams. Good luck coming up here in the midweek. We'll be keeping an eye on you this season. Thanks for dropping by for a 2v1. Great to see you and uh, have a great season. We'll catch up with you soon, my friends. Thanks so much.